Hello, everyone. Uh, you are all muted. Uh, welcome to the seminar, Music Business Secrets for Singers by Greta Pope. Um, you're free to talk in the chat and ask questions as you like, and Greta will answer that throughout the seminar. So welcome, and you can start. Hello. I'm Dr. Greta Pope, and I am so excited to welcome you to the private music studio, Music Business Secrets for Singers live stream, brought to you by the Copper Center. I'm so excited that you're here today. These are truly unprecedented times. Suddenly, we have time to reflect on our career and think about next steps once the pandemic is over. Clearly, you're thinking about next steps because you're here. Change presents opportunity. This particular change gives us time to seize the opportunity. Next slide, Henrique. So that you can get to know a little bit more about my background and experience, we will just listen to the next couple of slides. This first one is a jingle demo, my jingle demo. Henrik? Just for the fun of it, just for the one of it, just for the taste of it, diet coke, just for the joy of it, just for the smile, just for the taste of it, diet coke. When you do the math, You'll choose McGrath. McGrath flexes, McGrath flexes. When you do the math, you'll choose McGrath. Next slide, please, Henrik. This is a voiceover demo, some of the voice work that I've done over the years. I'm a professional singer and actress. I'm always careful about my health and well-being and take special care with my voice. That's why I chose Northwestern Memorial Hospital as my primary care provider. My son was wondering why we always use Crest toothpaste and never a different brand. I smiled and said, Honey, nothing compares to Crest for cavity fighting and breath freshening. How intense is the flavor of 99 banana schnapps? I'm here with zookeeper Tom Hartigan to find out. Tom, you deal with monkeys, right? Could you let me in the monkey cage? That's a gorilla cage? Even better. No one loves bananas more than gorillas. It was over eight months ago that my husband gave me the anniversary gift I've always wanted. The most beautiful cream-colored Lexus you could imagine. I just found the perfect bank, TCF Bank. TCF is open seven days a week and is conveniently located inside most Jewel Osco stores. And not only do you get convenience, you get TCF totally free checking, too. The newest fragrance from Estee Lauder. You're mine. A fragrance to attract, allure, intoxicate, and seduce. You're mine. When it comes to buying your next car, truck, or van, just say Midway. Midway Ford. Blue Oval certified and ready to help you get in and drive out in a new or used vehicle. Midway Ford. Next slide, please, Henrique. I've been a professional singer all of my adult life. I've traveled in many parts of the world as a performer and have learned many things about developing a successful singing career. I had many myths in my mind initially 
uh, when I first began singing. And one of them was that we as singers often think the talent is the only thing that matters. And the second myth is that we think that someone will come along, swoop us up, and make great things happen in our careers. Though this occasionally happens, by and large, myth one and myth two are fallacies. We as singers must be prepared to create the best product that we can based upon our skills, and we must be prepared to market and sell our own products. We must be business savvy singers. So you can see on this slide some of the professional experience that I've had, uh, some of the things that I've done, and it's, it's been a wonderful career. And, uh, and we're gonna talk about you know, how you can maybe do some of these kinds of things as well. Next slide, please, Henrique. I'm the president and CEO of privatemusicstudio.net. I've worked many years in the areas of performing, producing, promoting, recording, and educating. I struggled early on in my career because I believed that myths one and two were true. After working with agents and managers who were not getting me the volume or caliber of work that I wanted, it occurred to me to try doing these things for myself. It was a lot of work and a lot of frustration, but eventually the desired work started coming in. Next slide, please. Next slide. I returned to academia and earned a doctoral degree. So I had gotten my undergraduate and my master's degree and they were basically music oriented. Um, I decided after having you know, several kind of unique experiences with the business side of the business that I would go back and, and get a, a doctoral degree in business. And I was just so happy that I did that because it gave me a perspective on business that I was then able to apply specifically to music. And that's something that so often we as singers uh, are missing. We're not thinking of our businesses as business. Next slide, please. As a result of getting the doctorate, I was offered several opportunities to teach. Uh, I was a teaching artist at the Chicago High School for the Arts and I taught music business classes, uh, vocal performance, uh, piano classes, music theory classes, and private voice lessons and coaching. These things all seemed to suit my skill set and it was a, it was a great uh, situation for me. Uh, I've been a speaker at uh, arts conferences and at colleges, and I've been a private voice teacher and coach in my own private music studio. So I uh, am just, I, I love the idea of teaching, and I think it is just such an important thing for singers not only to learn how to sing, but to learn how to read music, for example, so that if you get an opportunity for studio work, you can go in there, rehearse it once, and be on it the second time. Because for producers of jingles and that kind of thing, time is money. So the sooner that you're able to, to get a grip on what it is that you're supposed to be singing, bring some style, some personality, and do a good job, the more frequently you're going to be called. So let's go on to the next slide. Um, I've spent my, uh, much of my spare time involved in community endeavors, getting to know people and broadening my horizons. This is so important because you want people to know the products that you have to offer. And the best way to do that is to get out into the community and let people get to know you and get to know what products you have to bring to bear. So I would, without a doubt, advise that you get involved in your community. I've been on a number of different boards, uh, SAG-AFTRA local board, the Chicago local board, uh, the SAG-AFTRA singers committee, I've been chair of that. But in addition to the arts kinds of things, I am currently a member of the Miami University alumni board, and uh, I am the immediate past president of the Advocate Trinity Hospital board. So these are things that are not at all arts related, but, but they've been a wonderful thing for me and I've met some very interesting people. Next slide, please. 
I also have uh, written a book called Music, Money, and You, Managing the Business. Uh, and I also maintain the Music Business Expert blog. Uh, and, and that's a good thing. You know, my students uh, read my blog and, uh, and I give advice maybe on, you know, uh, how to protect your voice during the changing seasons, during allergy season. Um, just various things, and, and that gives me an opportunity to keep up with my students, in addition to others that follow my blog. Next slide, please. I want to thank Jess and Henrique because they have been so wonderful in setting up this live stream. Uh, they, their, their expertise is, is beyond compare, and they've just been lovely. So thank you, Jess and Henrique. Next slide. Uh, there will be a survey at the end of this session. Fill it out and submit to receive a free chapter of my self-help book, Music, Money, and You, Managing the Business. This particular chapter talks about um, USO tours, fun travel, lessons learned, really neat things. Uh, and, and I think it, uh, it will be helpful to you. So. So please fill out the survey. We want to, um, you know, do the things that you want. We, you know, I want to get some ideas for the next two uh, live streams that we'll be doing. One will be on April 15th, uh, and that will be on setting your goals. And the other will be on April 22nd, and that one will be on putting it all together. So we're going to talk about some things today, and then we'll talk about setting your goals. And then on the 22nd, we will talk about putting all of that together and, uh, and creating something that you can, you know, when, when this pandemic is over and, and life goes back to probably a new normal, you will be able to hit the ground running with your career. Next slide, please. The private music studio.net live stream is specifically designed for singers. Singers who sing only, in any style. Singers who play an instrument and sing. Singer dancers, singer songwriters, rappers, whatever kind of singing you may be doing, this live stream is for you. So I'd like you guys to type into the chat what kinds of singer or singing you're doing. You know, are you a singer-songwriter? Are you a singer that's singing only? Are you playing piano and singing or guitar? Are you rapping? What are you doing? Okay, okay. I see that Lynn is saying that she is a singer and that she's, you know, been doing it for some time, for 20 years. That's great. Hi, Lynn, how are you doing? Uh, I see that Ava is, uh, is a singer only, and that's great. And then I see that Susie is a guitarist and singer, and she does her one woman kind of singer songwriter types of shows. Um, Michael is a dancer, and so is Alexia. Alexia has indicated that she's a dancer and she sings as well. So this gives you some idea. You know, there's a real variety of uh, types of uh, people that are singing and that are looking to make a living singing, whether that's the only thing they do or if it's part of, of kind of their whole package. Uh, next slide, please. So in my experience, I have found that there are generally three categories of singers. The first one is a singer who is making a living as a singer. Full-time living. The second one is a singer who is seriously trying to make a living, but is not quite able to do that and maybe working in another field. And then the third type of singer is the singer who has given up and is working full time in another field, singing as a hobby, if they're singing at all. And, and that is such an unfortunate thing because you know we sing because we love it. We love it, we enjoy doing it, and it's a shame when we're not able to fit it into our lives because our other work or our other obligations uh, take precedence. 
so it's, you know, we want to work to be able to sing, if not in a full-time way, certainly in a part-time way, certainly to have it in our lives, because singing is such a, a wonderful thing. And, you know, and I might add, not only is it wonderful just because we love it, but it's great for us physically. You know, we're getting good deep breaths. You know, we're, we're doing a lot of things that are physically benefiting from singing. And then in addition to that, it helps our cognitive skills as well. You know, we're remembering lyrics, we're remembering melody, we're doing a lot of things that are, are challenging our ability to recall things, uh, certainly as, as singers age. This is a wonderful thing, you know, for, for, to preserve your cognitive ability. So, next slide, please. So, I want to know how long you guys have been singing and what category you would consider yourself to be part of. Are you a full-time singer? Are you a part-time singer? Are you a hobbyist? So please type into the chat, let me know. Okay, I see from Lynn that she's been performing for 20 years full-time. Great, good for you. And, and I happen to have heard Lynn on many occasions and have worked with Lynn and she is a fantastic singer. Ava, Ava has been working part-time and she's been working for 25 years as a singer, part-time. Uh, I happen to also know a little bit about Ava. Um, she's a veterinarian, so she works with animals in her full-time life, but finds time to enjoy her singing skills. Felina, Felina's been working for 25 years full-time. Alexia has been working uh, part-time as a singer. She is a dancer primarily, and she's been doing that. Uh, Michael is saying that he has worked part-time. And then we have Ed, who is a hobbyist. He's, you know, he's singing, but not singing in a, um, a way where he's making money at it. He's, he's a hobbyist, but would like to be making money at it. So we have quite a smattering of experience and interest here. Next slide, please. So I want to talk a little bit with you about what your idea of success as a singer is. What does that mean to you? Next slide. So do you think in order to be successful, you need to have fame and acclaim like Beyonce? Next slide. Or Michael Buble, or Barbara Streisand, or Placido Domingo, for those of you who are classical singers, I know that we have a few here on the live stream. Do you feel that that's what, you know, does that identify success for you? Next slide, please. Is money the only thing? You know, these people that we talked about, they, have a tremendous net worth. Beyonce is worth $500 million. Michael Buble is worth 65 million. Barbara Streisand, 400 million. Placido Domingo, 300 million. Next slide, please. So is money the only indicator of success? And I think these are things that we need to think about, you know. I, I have uh, taught students at the Chicago High School for the Arts, and we would start our class off every year, and I would say, and they were all singers. All of these students were singers, about 20 of them in the class. And I would say to them, what is your idea of success as a singer? What, what do you think is going to happen to you as you go forward with your singing career? And they would say, oh, I want to be like Beyonce. Oh, I want to be like Rihanna. Oh, I, you know, I want to be like Katy Perry. You know, I, you know, I want to be like Bruno Mars. And I would say, you know, that happens to some singers. That kind of fame and fortune happened to some. But not to all of us. And so if that doesn't happen to you, does that mean you give up on, on a life as a singer? No, that doesn't mean that you give up. There are other ways to make a good living 
as a singer without being a household name. Next slide, please. What about happiness and fulfillment? Aren't those important to you? Being able to use your time in the way that you want to, being able to sing the music that you'd like, being able to control your life and feeling fulfilled and be with your family and all of those things. You know, these are things to consider. Next slide, please. Let's think about the ma and pa grocers that have a solid following and they make a good living, but they're not the size of Jewel or Publix or Kroger. Are they not successful? What about the neighborhood burger joint? That's the popular community hangout, the place where friends and family meet, birthday party central. Are they not successful because they're not McDonald's or Wendy's or Burger King? What about the specialty bookstore that attracts people from across the state interested in ornithology, which is bird watching? They're not comparable to Barnes and Noble or Amazon, but they have found their niche. They provide an atmosphere and an expertise that their followers absolutely love. Next slide. Of course these businesses are successful. Of course they are. They're providing a good living for their owners. They're sending their children to college. They're providing a secure and comfortable retirement. This is, this is what everyone looks for. And this is how we should look at the entertainment business. We need to stop thinking that we have to be famous to be singers. That's not the only way. We need to think about how can we fashion our career to provide the necessities in life and more. And I'm not talking about a career where you're eking by and barely able to pay the rent. I'm talking about a career where you're making good money. Next slide, please. We don't need to be earning tens or hundreds of millions of dollars to be successful. Next slide. It's possible to earn a great living as a singer without being a household name. Next slide. So you're probably thinking, well, how can I do that? So this is what we're going to talk about today and for the next two live streams. Next slide, please. First of all, we have to establish our goals and objectives. So you might say, well, what are goals and objectives? Next slide. Goals are what we want to achieve and objectives are the steps that get us to our goals. I'm going to say that again. Goals are what we want to achieve and objectives are the steps that get us to our goals. Next slide, please. So, a goal. You want to define your goal. What exactly do you want to accomplish? And I want you to really think about this. You know, we're, we're very quick to say, not only as singers, but as people in general, well, I want to be successful. But what to you is success? You have to really dig deep, think long, and really come up with what for you is success. A goal should be smart. S, it should be specific. M, measurable. A, attainable. R, realistic. And T, time bound. Next slide, please. So let's talk about specific. A specific goal is one that incorporates objectives. It is an action plan outlining how you will achieve the goal. So you want to be sure that whatever 
goal you put out there that you have a plan. And we're going to talk a little bit about how to craft that plan. Next slide. Your goal must be measurable. So that means that you will be able to identify exactly what you will see, feel, or hear when you have reached your goal. So, you know, what exactly is, uh, you know, you've got to define it clearly and then you've got to be able to put some kind of measurable parameter on it that you say, yep, this is it. I've reached the goal. It's concrete proof of having reached your goal. The next category is achievable. Is the goal achievable? Has anyone ever done this before? Are the necessary resources available? If not, is there a realistic chance of getting the resources? And this is, you know, this is an important thing. You know, you don't want to be off trying to accomplish something that is just beyond your ability to accomplish. It brings about frustration and you're probably not going to be successful. So we want it to be achievable. Next slide, please. Realistic. Is it possible to achieve this goal? Who's going to do it? So you might be thinking, okay, do you need an agent to help you? Do you need a manager? Are you going to be able to handle all of the work that this involves yourself? Is everything going to fall upon you? If you do have someone else that's going to help you, or if you are doing the tasks, do you have the necessary skills to do the task? These are important questions to ask. Where is the funding coming from? Who's going to pay for this? You might say, okay, I want to do a new CD. Okay, so now, you know, where's the money coming from? Do you have the money? Can you borrow it? Can, you know, can someone gift it to you? Parents maybe? You know, where is the funding coming from? Are the resources available? And who will bear the responsibility for what? Now, that is an important thing. You want to be sure that you are, everyone has specific tasks. So let's say you have an agent. And that agent's job might be to face out to the world and find opportunities for you. That is that person's job. You might have a manager. Perhaps the manager is helping you to develop your um, your performance or your aura or your brand. That is that person's job. And then your job might be learning the music and working with the band, or maybe you have a music director who is doing that. So, you know, you, you have to be clear on who's responsible for what. And a lot of times when we are first starting out, we as the singer are responsible for all of that because there was no budget for anyone else. So it is important to clearly define the roles. And if you're going to be wearing all the hats, make sure that you're hitting all the high points of those roles. Next slide, please. And the last category is timely or time bound. So a SMART goal is timely or time bound. And that means that you're going to establish a date by which the goal will be accomplished and you will establish dates by which every subtask will be accomplished. So let's say, let's say, that, you're, let's say that your goal is, is to do a CD, let's just for the sake of ease. So the first thing, of course, is going to be what is the material that you're going to sing? So maybe your first subtask might be, I've got a month to select my material. So let's say by June 1st, I'm going to have selected my material. And then let's say from June through September, you're going to select your musicians and you're going to rehearse your music and you're going to prepare it for the recording. And then let's say maybe September 15th, you're going to schedule your recording session time and go into the studio and do your recording. So these are the subtasks the overall um, time bound parameter would be that by October 1st or October 15th, 
I will have a new CD. So that's the overall goal. And then you have those subtasks that get you to that goal. Next slide, please. So here's another goal. Let's say that our goal is to earn $100,000 per year. How would we make this a SMART goal? How many bookings do we need annually? And how much should we be charging for each booking, et cetera? Next slide. There are a lot of things that will determine how much we can charge per booking. Some of those things are, next slide please. What type of music are you performing? Who is the audience for that music? And what are they willing to pay for that music. Now, I've often used the example of grunge rock. Now, this is a style of music that, uh, you know, you, you kind of think, well, it, it certainly has a following, but, but who is that following? And what would they be willing to pay for an artist doing that type of music? This is an important thing. Um, you know, I, I'd like to get some idea of what you think um, an artist or an, an audience that would pay a lot of money for your music would be. Who might that audience be? Please type into the chat. Okay. Okay, Joe is saying corporate audience. Absolutely. Absolutely a corporate audience would be. Jane, Jane is saying if you were to do your own event and produce it and charge for it and do all of your own marketing and all of your own stuff, then you probably could make your, you know, could make your money that way. So that would be an audience that would be willing to pay for your music. Of course, you need to have a following and all of these things are things that we will talk about in upcoming live streams. We have two more, April 15th and April 22nd. And we will talk about these things, you know, how to build a following and, and all of these sorts of things. Um, John is saying corporate audience. A lot of people are saying corporate. Absolutely. Corporate audience is, is, uh, is a big thing. Whether you're doing, um, you know, you're a featured performer in a corporate situation or if you're doing receptions with your band, uh, corporate receptions. Whatever you're doing, that, that corporate audience certainly um, is a good, a good place to, to start or to, to pursue. Next slide. So if you charge $1,000 per performance, you will need 100 bookings per year to reach your goal of $100,000. Next slide. How might you be able to find clients to pay? Let's think about who those clients might be. So we've talked about that. You've typed into the chat and that, you know, the corporate audiences are definitely uh, good audiences. Uh, there are a number of different kinds of audiences that um, might be able to afford to pay you this amount of money. Perhaps private parties, you know, weddings, bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah, those kinds of things. Uh, you go and you do a performance, you take your band along and you're able to um, charge enough money that you, would be able to earn the $1,000 per, per job. Next slide, please. So if you're unable to find enough clients to pay you $1,000 per date, what other options might you employ to reach your goal of $100,000 annually? What other things might you employ? Type your answer into the chat. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm seeing merchandise came from Lydia. Okay. Other kinds of, of things, merchandise, books, mugs, CDs, all of those things would, would come under the category of merchandise. And, you know, as you're selling merchandise, you can do that on your live performances. So, once your audience hears you, providing that the client says this is okay, and that's always an important thing to find out, is it okay to sell merchandise on the, on the job? 
But once people have heard you, frequently they want to buy your merchandise. You know, they'll maybe want to buy your t-shirt or they'll want to buy your mug or they'll want to buy your CD. So these are certainly other ways to get to that $100,000 annually. Next slide, please. The privatemusicstudio.net, just a little bit of information about us. Helping singers build financial stability for themselves and their families. Helping them to reconnect with their passion and to have a breakthrough in their work and relationships. And these are all such important things. You know, so many singers struggle. I can't tell you the numbers of singers that I've met that are really good and they struggle because they do not have the business savvy skills. And that is such an important thing. You know, I, I will, you know, I'm just going to be brutally frank. Occasionally you hear singers who really are not all that talented, but they're doing great. They're making lots of money. They don't have the greatest voice in the world, but they've got great personality. They have wonderful merchandise that they're selling. They understand the business of singing. So having talent is a great thing, but it isn't everything. Talent without business skills, not good. Business skills without a great deal of talent or an exceptional talent can be good. So that's something that we need to think about. It's not all about how we sound or how we look. It's about all of that coming together. So I want you to really keep that in mind. So my mission is to just help singers to recognize that so that we can have a bigger community of successful singers. You know, I, I have um, a theory that I've created and it is in my book and it is called the 100 people theory. And I find this to be so important and so poignant. If each of us, say each of us on this live stream had 100 true followers, only 100, that doesn't sound like a lot. It's not thousands, it's not millions of people. 100, including your family, your neighbors, your friends, your colleagues, your classmates, whatever. And they were our true fans and came to see our performances, bought our merchandise. We would be in great shape. And if we were then to take that a step further and share our fans, so when Lynn is performing, if, you know, I'm doing a, a show and I say to my audience, I have a great friend, Lynn, and she's a wonderful singer. She's doing a show on Friday night down the street. Go check her out. And then Lynn says that about Michael. Lynn says, my friend, Michael, he's going to be down the road on Sunday afternoon. Go check him out. If we help each other in this way, we could have a huge community, not only of business savvy singers, but of followers and fans. We could be creating an audience for ourselves. So this is an important thing. You know, we shouldn't view each other as competitors. We should view each other as allies because we can build something very special. Next slide, please. So I want you to think about what your specific goal or goals are. You can certainly have more than one. So is your goal to make more money? Well, of course, all of our goal is to make more money. But what exactly does that mean to you? Is your goal to have more bookings? Is your goal to get studio work? Is your goal to have a lifestyle change? Perhaps you want to leave your job that you're doing now and be a singer full time. Or perhaps you want to retire and sing part time. You know, whatever kind of lifestyle change you might have, maybe your children have grown up, they're leaving home, you won't have the responsibilities that you had with your children. Maybe you now want to jump both feet into a singing career. Do you want more personal fulfillment? Would you like more time off to spend with your family? Maybe you've been a, a singer with a great career and now you have little kids. 
you know, small children, you know, that need your attention. Or maybe children that are getting a little bit older and they need you at home in the evening for homework or to make sure that they get to bed on time. So rather than being out every evening working, you might want to have a change in your um, lifestyle. Um, would you like to get work that gives you the opportunity to travel? Travel is a wonderful thing. It's very broadening. And I feel fortunate in that I have had wonderful opportunities to travel performing. It's been a great thing. You know, so not only are you getting to see great places and meet interesting people, but you're also being paid to do that. So that's a wonderful thing. So think about what your specific goals are. What, you know, floats your boat, rings your chimes. What is it that you want for your life? Think about your specific goal. Next slide, please. So as I said, give some thought to it. It's important that you know where you wanna go before you head off in any direction. You know, if we were getting into our car and we wanted to go to a specific place, we wanted to go to the grocery store, say, and you know where it is, it's that way. But you're not going to get there if you start going that way. So you have to know specifically where you want to go and then go in that direction. We can't just, you know, willy nilly hope for the best. We've got to have a plan. Next slide, please. So we're going to pick up right here in session two of the privatemusicstudio.net live stream. And what, you know, what I want you guys to do is really, really take this to heart and think about what is it that you want for your career and for your life? This is really, 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 really important because without a plan, you'd probably not going to get there or you're not likely to get there um you know so i i want you to to really give some thought to it next slide please so let's have some questions so you guys can raise your hand you're still going to be on mute and you can raise your hands and henrique is going to um then I think forward the questions to me. I think that's how it's going to work. He's going to forward them to me. So, okay. So the first question we have is from Felina. And I'm reading her question. Okay. Felina is asking about a website. She says that she has been singing for a long time but she has not in recent years um, done anything, any online kinds of things. So she's wanting to know about creating a website and, and the importance of it. Is, it. is it important? My feeling is absolutely it's important. You know, our world is becoming increasingly digital, increasingly online, and certainly with this pandemic, everyone is online. Everyone researches everything online. You know, if there's something you don't know, you know, I, I happen to watch TV with my phone and I Google everything, you know, um, everything. You know, perhaps an actress, uh, you know, when was she working or what years did this particular show run? Or perhaps I will hear a term that I'm not familiar with. I will Google that. And I think a lot of people do that. So you want to have a web presence. That's really an important thing. And you want people to be able to Google your name and boom, up pops a lot of information about you because that's what is going to help you get work. Um, you know, people who would be hiring you want to know about you. They want to know the style of music you're singing. They want to know a little about your personal life, maybe your bio. What is your background? What is your experience? What are your values? All of those kinds of things. So a website is a good way to tell your own story. It isn't a review. It's not something that someone else is writing about you. It's what you want the world to know about you. So I would say absolutely a website is, is an important thing 
and, uh, and we should certainly all have them. Um, I know of several people who build websites. It can get to be quite expensive depending upon what you uh, want to have on your website, uh, how interactive you want it to be. There are also um, programs and templates that can allow you to build your own website fairly easily. WordPress is one, Wix, Weebly. All of these things are ways that if you're just starting out and you simply want some kind of web presence, you can work and build your own. You know, it's, it's, it's work to figure out how to do it, but these companies are supportive and you can, you can build your own um, website. So I am going to uh, have a uh, resource document that I will send out to everyone that is on this live stream uh, with, with some things that you can uh, do, some resources, names of some people who can build websites for you. There, there are webmasters at all different levels. And, um, and Lynn is saying that she knows of someone who is very reasonable and can build build you a very nice website. So I will, I will send out a sheet of resources and, uh, and you can then, you know, email or whatever and find out, you know, uh, the cost of these things and, and get the service that fits with your budget or you can build yourself. Okay, let's see, are there other questions? Lydia is asking if the next two live streams will be free. Absolutely, they will be free. You know, when, when this pandemic first began, you know, I, I thought, you know, I wish that there was a way that I could help other singers to be able to gain some new skills and be able to hit the ground running when things turn around. Because right now we are all missing income that we were expecting that we would have. So it's going to be very, very important that once things turn around, that we are able to hit the ground running, get out there and get work. And I think that people will be, um, you know, corporations, individuals, people will be so interested in having their parties and getting back to their normal lives. And, and I do believe that there will be many, many opportunities. People will be celebrating to get back to what will probably be a new normal, but, but something other than, you know, staying at home. So um, I just want everyone to be able to, to take advantage of that. And uh, so, yes, the other two live streams will be free. I want as many people as possible to join us because I have some interesting, valuable things to share. So if you have any singer friends, please encourage them to join us. I, I think they will enjoy it. I think they will benefit greatly from it. Um, and, uh, you know, and I look forward to, to seeing you guys and, and a number of other people on the, on the live stream as well. Okay, next slide, please. Well, I wanna thank you for joining us today. Be sure to fill out the survey to claim your free gift. Tell us what you liked about this live stream and tell us you know, if you have any thoughts or suggestions or comments, because I really wanna make this meaningful for you. If there are any things that you want to know about or have questions about, um, we will certainly address them. We will be talking about networking and about branding. And, and we can even talk about performance anxiety. I don't know if any of you all suffer with that, but it certainly is something that a lot of people do struggle with. Uh, performance anxiety, stage fright, whatever you want to call it. So we can talk about that as well. Uh, but I, I just want to, you know, see you guys succeed. And I, you know, I just want to build a community of singers that can help each other and support each other and have a good time together, have fun together. Okay, so next slide, please. Okay, so it's been my pleasure to be with you today. Thank you so much for joining us. 
And uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. Please give some thought to your specific goals and the objectives by which you might attain those goals. And really, really think about it because I'm going to ask you about it on our next live stream. I want to know what, what are your goals and, and how do you think you might attain those goals? Because without a specific plan, success can be elusive. So thank you so much. I'm Dr. Greta Poe. It has been my pleasure to be with you today. See you next time. Thank you.